Hello, my name is Glenn Mon. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for Teamwork Security. I'm both proud and excited to talk to you a bit today about our project that we've worked on in partnership with NavAir called INDEX. INDEX stands for Intelligent Data Extraction. We were charged by the Navy to improve their acquisition process um, to shorten the amount of time it takes to go from the proposal stage to the contract stage in the contract life cycle. We've accomplished this through applying the technologies of machine learning, automation, natural language process, um, and others. I'd like to take a moment to share with you uh, about who we are, what we do, and the products and services that we've created at Teamwork Security. We're based in Columbia, Maryland, and are very proud of our minority and veteran-owned status. We are also equally proud of our contributions to this country's defense. Our company began as a John Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory spinoff. But despite this impressive pedigree, it's what we've done since then that truly really shows who we are and what we stand for. Every minute of every day, teamwork security applies our knowledge, expertise, passion for excellence, and sense of duty to the country in the development and application of data analytics, machine learning, artificial intelligence, software development and engineering, among other vital data services. All of this focused on the success of the mission. Our focus, simply put, is to excel at solving tough problems and creating elegant solutions that put the user first. Always putting the user first. We specialize in technical excellence and by that, I mean building and providing truly innovative products and services. All of this is created in the context of a highly capable team who love what they do. We also believe that a hammer is a hammer and a wrench is a wrench. So not all things are complex and not all things are able to be solved by a cookie cutter approach. There's a good, better and best way to do things. Where are we awesome? Well, our team is awesome. We have uh, amazing team members who live and breathe technology and who work to make the, better, the world a better place. We are also awesome at research and development. Um, everything from building and creating new products to solving hard problems. Data. We love data. Everything about data. Everything from analytics to AI to ML to um, natural language processing, um, RPA. We love data. We love taking data and, uh, and uh, building out automation associated to it. Software engineering. We excel at building web applications, mobile apps, creating integrations to, for workflows to complex systems, building out APIs, all those things tying um, disparate systems together in a cohesive flow and function. We also excel at cloud-based solutions, right? Everything from infrastructure to system automation. We also, in our core capabilities, um, are able to support deep collaboration and project management. So let's talk about our products for a moment. So our products, um, we're very proud of the effort that we put into them, and they um, really have made a difference in the lives of our users. So the first one is Hive IQ. It's really a collaboration communication platform focused on incident response management for cybersecurity. There is a community of people who are able to exchange information in real time and to respond, organize um, together to, uh, to make a difference. Deeply integrated to Hive IQ is Matrix. Matrix is a malware analysis and threat research platform that um, uh, empowers folks to bring in malware, figure out what it's doing, and uh, deconstruct it and formulate a response to it and communicate um, about that threat. Stream is a, is a interesting solution that um, is closely tied to test um, results evaluation and monitoring testing um, uh, capabilities and outputs in a way that can be easily managed and identified and understood. Index, we've talked about and are talking about today, so we'll talk some more about that. And then ADA, really about um, 
advancing our, our human capability intelligence um, and understanding that in terms of what do humans do, how do they operate, how does that apply to, to systems um, and, and decisioning, um, which helps us in RPA and our automation of, of processes to empower, enable um, users um, to better complete their jobs. As I stated previously, the Navy challenged us to help them in their acquisition program and procurement offices um, with the processes that analysts must go through to bring in and analyze um, proposal um, documentation um, to go through process numeric data, process textual data, and be able to summarize, validate, and process through um, um, these things into um, their contract life cycle and ultimately to contract award. And so part of this is just realizing that there's a huge burden on the analyst, both from a cognitive standpoint and from just a physical capability to go through and look at this documentation and be able to go through and understand and process and, and all of those, those things in that context. So it was determined that the Navy really needed to utilize not just some sort of extractive technology or just some other, some other pieces that are more an automated process of co copy here, paste there. It really was determined that natural language processing, artificial intelligence, machine learning with automation were all part of what we needed to look at for the solution. These ex needs n not only extend to... Uh, to the procurement process, but also across Navy programs and offices. So um, that's why they are the focus of the Navy Technology Acceleration Program to which this topic belongs. From an operational standpoint, um, we looked at the problem and we um, looked at and identified where is the biggest need for the type of technology that we're looking at from the process from end to end. And when you uh, look at the proposal processing that the, the Navy does, they take proposals and the analysts go through those proposals and they process them. They look at numeric data, they look at language, they look at um, just um, contextual information, and they process that information into what's called a business clearance memorandum or a BCM. So the idea of this first step is just to take this myriad of information, which may be in PDF formats or Excel formats or text formats or Word documents or even images containing uh, numeric and text-based data, and take all of that and process through it and create this summarize, summarized document called this BCM. Now, this BCM is a very few um, page, page document, depending on how, how complex things are, but it is derived from, some, from um, proposal documents that may be hundreds, if not a thousand pages worth of uh, information. So you can see that's a very onerous task of taking all of this information and bringing it down into a way that can be summarized and brought along in the process. So this is where we focused. We said, can we um, take this process and create a tool, create a mechanism by which we could help the analysts reduce the amount of time here. So our goals associated to that was like, can we create something that reduces the repetitive workload? How often an analyst needs to go bounce back and forth between documents, look at data, um, process data, be able to, to just, you know, you can imagine there's a bunch of different documents and you've got to refer to different things. You've got to read them. You've got to be able to find where things are in there. And there's a lot of bouncing back and forth and a lot of repetitive tasks for that. We also knew that we needed to really focus on, um, if we focused on the repetitive tasks, but we also focused on the overall production, we needed to decrease the time from where requirement definition occurs to the contract award, right? And so this space is, is a, an important part for it. We also know that because of the complexity of the type of uh, documents, think about that this, uh, these documents are not like, you know, at home or, or wherever we all have, um, you know, assistants that are, you know, virtual in nature. They understand our language and they respond to us, Alexa or Siri or among other things, right? Those things understand more conversational language. In the case of the tasks that are going on and being 
being um, um, conducted by the now analysts, they really have to go through and understand and process numerics, right? Math associated with the proposal. They need to go through and understand, you know, um, the language. Oftentimes it's very specific to the domain, right? So what are those uh, domains that they're working on? Also, it's very specific um, to a, a legal language, a language that has a lot of um, legal based context. And so all those things make this a very hard nut to crack. And ultimately, it makes it a hard job for analysts, right? Analysts need a lot of training and a lot of investment to be able to go through and complete this task, right? By the time you gain the expertise and the knowledge and the, be able to be good at it, um, that, is a, that is a multi, oftentimes a, a year or more in the process to, to train folks. So out of this thing is we had a goal of can we reduce the amount of time or the knowledge gaps between more entry level folks and experienced personnel. And how can we accelerate that so that in times of dynamic, you know, workload needs, could they scale their workforce to help them get through and process? So that was one of the goals. The other thing is just how can we not only take um, this extraction process, but how can we really um, provide automation in terms of process and in terms of activity um, comparing the responses to the RFP and, uh, and uh, to, the, to the FAR. And all of this, you know, helping reduce the analyst's cognitive um, load so that it's uh, something that's, more, that's easier for them to go through and do, right? So again, this is just helping to facilitate the, the proposal to contract award process. When thinking about the problem and, you know, the way that we have worked with this before, um, you know, it's not a new problem. It's not a problem that um, um, doesn't have a broad base of things that can be um, identified as. In other words, maybe what better said is that um, this is not a new thing for any process that has a technical aspect or a financial aspect to it that has a specific domain type of knowledge. So there's a broad um, applicability to what we have looked at. And so our approach was to say, this is not a snowflake. This is not something that is just a one and done. If we can build a platform and if we can look at how to solve these problems by, um, by training and bringing data in to help our models to make better decisions and take information from the user and the user's activities and feed it back in, we know that we can create something that learns, something that understands um, in terms of what, a, what, a, what the technology can do and, um, and improve its output and its accuracy. So we see that it could be applied to lots of different contexts and different businesses um, with different domains. So, um, so one of the things we know is that generally, um, uh, and depending on computational power, you know, your, your uh, ability to read documents and go through um, from an AI ML process is oftentimes 100, 100, here we have 170 times because of reference in documentation um, or in literature, but at least that type of uh, improvement in speed over a human. We also know that we can produce summaries and reports 40 times faster as a general rule. Um, and as a result of all this, we know that we can save thousands of hours of labor per year for any place that we apply this, and specifically as we worked with, uh, with NAVAIR. How did this operational need index was born? We knew we needed to build a platform that could process numeric contextual data, extract it, and be able to extract it from proposal contract documents and provide summaries and visualizations of that data. We also um, understood that our best tools to use were um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and natural language processing. We uh, knew that we, if we could get um, document sets and we could go process those document sets that we could build models associated to, to those documents, we could expand upon the domain accuracy associated to them and build a, um, models and corpuses that allowed us or enabled us to be more accurate over time. 
So the, the concept was, can we go build this thing? Can we go um, produce models that give us the ability to populate these BCMs? So we knew that we're gonna apply these uh, techniques and, um, and that we needed to be able to have the ability to process in PDF files, like I said earlier, Word documents, Excel documents, it, you know, even in some cases, you know, um, images that were copy and pasted or screen grabbed out of Excel spreadsheets pasted into Word documents. Even that type of stuff was, was within these documents that we processed. So we needed the ability to go through all that stuff and do that, bring it into, a, into our platform, process against our models, make predictive analysis and summarization analysis, and output them in a, in a sample BCM. So as we go through, the engine that we um, have worked with and the platform we've worked with um, has to understand language in the context of corpuses in multiple ways, right? When we think about the analysis of language, um, we, uh, we analyze um, language based on what are the words that are there, what are the orders of the words, what is the frequency of words, what is the distribution, what is the inverse distribution, of those words, how do those come together in terms of phrases and sentences, and ultimately into larger concepts of paragraphs and and uh, and beyond? So you have to apply a very sophisticated set of of analytic tools to be able to look at those things in a way that you can make you know which is the thing that is the most complicated thing out of this is really these uh, um, human readable summaries of language. These summaries. Um, need to be able to be made from going through and looking at documents, finding excerpts in the document that are meaningful, and taking those excerpts, whether they're in one document or multiple, processing them together in a way that um, we can place that, that content or that copy, that text, into a field in the BCM that makes it human readable in an accurate way. So that's part of the challenge of what what we uh, worked on, have worked on with index. And we know, you know, here's some metrics. We know that there is a significant time saving, you know, which you can scale based on computational capabilities, faster computing to, um, to you know, output things in a faster and faster basis. But, you know, the, the process for which these BCMs were being produced um, was taking a human 33 plus hours to do that. And our, um, our view is that we could get that down into um, um, the view of just several hours to produce one versus the 33. So. so here you see the um, schedule of milestones versus the, the timeline for producing um, our operational prototype. So we went through this and we have delivered all of these milestones and they are complete at this point. So what are the current capabilities of index and what have we produced? So we produce an application and platform that delivers on the vision of what we set out to do. So um, the application itself, and maybe we'll, we'll do a little bit of theater of the mind since I can't uh, in this context demonstrate the application. But um, what we've done is created an application that you log into. And in the application, you have the ability to create what's called an evaluation. This valuation um, is comprised of the documents associated to the proposal and ultimately the BCM that's created and output as part of the process. So you create an evaluation, you're presented with an interface where you're able to, to go out and navigate to whatever your uh, document repository, data repository for your uh, proposals are. And you're able to take those uh, documents, and in this case, we have an intelligent data ingestion process by which we're able to take spreadsheets, PDFs, um, Word documents, text-based documents, CSVs, uh, image image uh, images. Um, oftentimes, we found in some of these documents, like especially Word documents, people have gone and done you know done screen captures or captured. Um, uh, images and embedded them within uh, within the Word document. Oftentimes, these are of parts of spreadsheets and such. So, of course, that uh, that um, means that you have to be fairly sophisticated about extracting that information. 
So you, you're able to identify these documents. You're able to import them into the interface. The next thing you're able to do is really go through and open these documents in the interface, see their contents, make sure and do your inventory of do are all the documents here you expect, are they all the right documents? You're able to do um, a lot of what, uh, you know, I would call standard, um, you know, text um, um, editing, text um, manipulation interface, like a, a word processor or whatever. So you're able to go in there, open them, you can search, you can do all of those things. And once you're satisfied that you've got all the documents, these, these documents are then submitted to our, our platform and our, our model engine. And they're processed through. And uh, we, um, on the back end, are taking those documents, um, using the mechanisms that I talked about previously, and we're pre-populating uh, a, a BCM draft for the user. And so what happens is after they're submitted, the user is presented with this screen. And the screen really has two halves to it. On the left-hand side is the document view of the draft BCM. All of the fields um, or all of the data entry points are fields that are exposed to the user. And those pieces of data, whether it's numeric or text or whatever, have been pre-populated into that draft. So in other words, when I go there and I look at that draft, I can see like if there is a total and the system has identified a number, say 10 million, that it is populated in the field where the, the model has most likely identified that that number belongs. It has also gone through and it has extracted text out of documents and it has placed it in there. It also has gone through and, and extracted and summarized text and placed it within the document. So all of those pieces are there. It has figured out the context of the mathematical. It has um, validated that it is the right piece of data to the best of its ability. And it is pre-populated in a view that the user sees without having to take any further action. On the right-hand side of the screen is the actual documents that um, are from the sources that are input. So in other words, there's a view of, of a document there side by side. So I can see my draft BCM and I can also see a source document. To make it even sweeter and even better, the BCM and the fields that are populated are clickable. And so if I take that 10 million number or whatever and I click on it, on the right-hand side, the source document that that number came from appears and the 10 million number is highlighted within that document. So understand the power of that, of someone being able to go look at a draft, be able to click on something that is pre-populated for them and go and see where that came from in the source document in a way that it's highlighted in the way that I can see the context of where that thing came from. Think about what a, what a powerful you know, accelerant that is for someone to be able to get through the documents and understand where things have come from. And so we do the same thing for the numbers in there for all of the different fields, the text fields, whether we extracted some text, it you click on it, it shows up the source document, uh, it automatically finds the right one and shows you where it came from. So now the analyst can go, oh, here's a number. Is this the right number? Do I feel whatever? I can click on it. I can go see it in the source and I can have a context that if I need to adjust it, I can, I can edit it. Um, that's all part of the capability. And, uh, um, and then I can also just go through and say, do these summaries make sense? Does all this make sense? Um, not all of the BCM is able to be populated by our process. Some of it just takes good old fashioned, you know, things that are not part of the documents or other information that are not part of the proposal. And so those parts are the analysts are able to go in there and edit in the interface and do that. Um, ultimately, the, um, the analyst can then export the the finalized BCM and uh, bring it into whatever system or export it to whatever system that they want for the next steps of their process. So, you know, able to go in, analysts are able to search within the documents, whether it's the draft BCM or the source documents, they're able to see the data that we extracted, where they're able to see it in the context, you know, in the interface of where that information came from. It also um, is, um, we have the ability to um, obviously 
um, make sure that we're doing predictive things in mathematical analysis to uh, identify what are the are the fields and what should be populated. And uh, and like I said, the secret sauce of a lot of systems is can we um, as abstractively um, summarize data or text in a way that it's human readable. So all those things that we have gone through and have done, and the system does do these things. Um, and and so anyway, as you can imagine, for the analysts, this is a this is a major leg up, um, and uh, will fulfill the vision uh, as we move forward and make it more and more sophisticated. So where do we go from here? So as I spoke about earlier. Um, we value the user and the user's feedback um, because ultimately they're the ones that this is uh, that our efforts are intended to help. So what do we need to do? Well, we built a prototype and it works, but we would really want to further refine the UI, the user interface, and the design to make it even easier and better targeted at the needs of, of the user. We would also want to expand our data set that is available for training. We want to make sure that as we're feeding information in to the model, the more we can give it data sets that show um, what what are the you know what are the questions and what are the right answers, so to speak, the model gets smarter and smarter about being predictive. Not only that, we would want to be able to add the capability of of uh, um, being able to watch user activity and look at the answers that users are giving as they give them and uh, and be able to feed that back into the model. And so that will, um, you know, accelerate the ability for us to build better and better models with higher and higher accuracy. So we'd want to expand and continue to do that. We also um, want to, you know, really the power of our platform and the way that we have uh, have built things is really to leverage um, also the idea of uh, um, uh, RPA, right? Be able to, um, you know, be able to use robotics and automation to be able to um, tie um, what we have created into systems. So in other words, think about the power of, of not only are you able to go through and extract this information in a way that it can be utilized, but that you can automate you know, um, steps in other systems and population of things in other systems that mimic what a user would do. So the power of what we see is if you take RPA, robotic process automation, and you tie it together with um, the strength of what um, AI ML can do, then you really have a very, very strong capability where you have not only a system that can process and understand data, but you can tie multiple systems together and in an interoperable way where it keeps users from having to go for, to this system, to that system, to that system. You can create automation that, that uh, allows one system to talk to another without a user having to go through and do repetitive tasks. So part of this whole thing is the next parts of this would be investing in that, that process automation, investing in the interoperability to different interfaces and building out API sets. Um, all of these things um, are, are a critical part of um, what we see as far as the transition ahead. As I shared before, our platform can be applied to a very broad um, set of um, industries or market segments specifically those market segments that have had um, the challenges of the context of their, uh, their language and their domain knowledge uh, associated to just the complexity of tasks. So we see that the aviation industry certainly can, uh, can benefit from this in some of their processes. We see different businesses having things that are associated to legal or financial uh, um, uh, processes, medical, certainly there is a, a bunch of different things this could be used for, including compliance and other, uh, and other things. So it is really broad. The way we thought about the platform was, of course, we solve and work on the problem that we had at hand, but we also thought about the platform in a wider context where it could be applied to lots of different problems uh, associated to the strengths of the, of the tool. Our business model follows really two trains of thought. 
One is a, a direct uh, license to the government of the technology. The other is uh, licensing um, to a system integrator as long as there is no conflict, as it says. Um, it doesn't mean that we're not up for discussions of, of other models. These were just the two thoughts that we have at this point. I just want to wrap this up by saying thanks to all of you who have uh, listened through and uh, and uh, have invested the time to understand what we've accomplished and the success that we've had. Um, I also just want to make sure that uh, you uh, are aware that um, we have some great folks that you can come talk to about uh, about our work and uh, how we can help you. Um, both Laura and Tom here are uh, exceptional folks who uh, who really have a passion to help. So uh, reach out to us. Glad to talk about it. Glad to bounce some ideas. Um, whatever whatever makes sense. So again, thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. And uh, have a great rest of your day. Talk soon. Bye.